Hey, welcome back, guys. So let's flash from firmware to the uh, Furious FPV Piggy OSD. This is going to be very similar to the Minim OSD Micro. And uh, if you haven't watched, or if you don't know, look in the description below. I have an entire playlist for the Minim OSD Micro. Um, but like I said, this is going to be almost exactly the same. So if you've already watched this, then you probably know how to figure this one out. But uh, for those of you that have not watched this, or either one of the videos then I'll walk you through this one. So this video is just going to be setting up the firmware. The next video will be setting up the MWOSD GUI and the video after that will be how to wire everything. To do this the first thing you need is a serial converter, breakout board, whatever you want to call this. Furious FPV actually has one that they sell which looks like this right here you can use this one or uh, you could use the one that I'm using. It, they all work. Um, you don't have to use their specific one. So I'm going to leave you a link to both of these in the description below. Uh, that way you could find either one of these. This one is a little bit cheaper. And I, I mean I, I use this for everything. Very very handy tool to have. Also before you even begin what you need to do is remove a capacitor from this board because you will not be able to flash firmware with that capacitor on this board. I don't know if you can see this but there are two capacitors one on the left one in the middle and then on the right side you have a resistor. The one on the far left and it says um, C8 right underneath it that is the one you need to remove and I don't know how well you can see but I've already removed mine. I just took some wire clippers like this and just pulled it off. So your next question might be well if we remove it to flash firmware do we have to put it back on? The answer is no. No absolutely not. Um, so then your next question is well why did they even put it on the board? I don't have an answer for that one. Um, my only guess is they do that to keep people from flashing firmware to it who don't know what they're doing and keeping them from screwing something up but um, I mean you guys have me you have this video you're not going to screw anything up now let's understand the uh, the pinout so the pinout on the PEOSD you have ground ground voltage receive transmit and DTR and then on the serial converter and not just this one but the one that I'm using is the same exact pinout you have ground CTS which is also ground VCC for voltage then you have transmit instead of receive. That's actually normal because it's transmitting data and the Piggy OSD is receiving the data. So they have to be flip flopped. Then you have receive and transmit and DTR to DTR. So this means if you're using that one, then it will look like that. If you're using the same one that I'm using with the pins on the top side, it will go in like this. Now you can take uh, servo wires server wires like this and plug it into here and then solder them onto the board to get that real good solid connection because if you do this you risk um, not making a solid connection between one or more of the pins I haven't had any problems doing it this way and I am lazy so I, f I shouldn't be teaching you guys how to do it this way but this is how I'm going to do it if you don't if you try to flash firmware and the firmware does not flash then you might not have a solid connection in that case just solder the wires onto the board. I mean don't solder these but solder the servo wires. Next we need the Arduino program like this. So you can go to arduino.cc I'll leave this link for you in the description below so uh, you can just find it easier and then you want to click software then you just want to scroll down and uh, depending on which computer you have is going to determine which one of these you click on. I'm using a Windows computer and if you are using Windows you can click this which will download the program onto your computer or you can use the app. When I made my minimum OSD micro playlist the app wasn't even invented yet um, but now they have it so I, I'm going to be using the app but uh, just know that these two are exactly the same exactly the only difference is the app automatically updates itself where if you download this it does not so that's the only reason I'm using the, the app but you can use either one and after that we need MWOSD firmware and GUI so 
I'll leave this link for you in the description. You want to come here. You can click this folder here, which will give you the newest version, the newest solid version of firmware. And at the time you're recording this, it's version 1.6. 1.6 does work great. Um, but if you've used any flight controllers compatible with Betaflight's OSD feature, uh, that's the best flight con I mean, that's the best OSD out there to to date at the time you're recording this. Um, so what they've done is they're actually working on version 1.7. It's not finished yet, but you can use a pre-release, which will be what I'm using. I've tested it. It does work great. And for if you do want that, then click latest releases. And that will bring you here. You can just uh, scroll down. Whatever the newest version is, it could be different if you're watching this at a later date. Or if just to add to that, if you're watching this, like, long after I've recorded this, they might have 1.7 already up. So in that case, you could, no matter what, just click this folder and see what version they're going to give you. If it's 1.7, then use that. Don't do what I'm doing here, because obviously it's already been released. Uh, but for the rest of you that are still seeing 1.6, you can just click source code here and download what you need there. Once you have installed the Arduino and MWOSD, uh, after you, know, you download it and then you install it to your computer, we're now ready to go. So let's go into Arduino. Then you want to click File, Open, and yours probably won't automatically come up with this, so let me just back up. You want to find wherever you downloaded it to, and I put it, I have an RC folder with all my RC stuff. So I put it in there, and then I have I made another folder just for MWOSD. So now we should all be seeing this, and then click that, click that again, and then not MWOSD GUI, but MWOSD. And then out of this, you want to click MWOSD again. Now you should be seeing something that looks like this. Then click on the config.h tab. Before we go any further, go to tools. And for board, you want to select Arduino Pro or Pro Mini. Processor at Mega 328, 5 volts, 16 megahertz. Then for port, um, I'm only seeing COM1 right now. And I, I know it's not COM1 because I don't have my serial converter plugged in. Now before you even plug in your serial converter, if you are using the one that I'm using, then look on the back side and you'll see 5 volt and 3v3 and there's going to be three different pads you want to select 5 volts and to select 5 volts you want to take a just a drop of solder and solder the there's three pads right there's a pad in the middle and one on 5 volts solder those two pads together that's going to bridge them which will make 5 volts come out of the 5 volt pin after you've done that you, you can just plug this right into your computer I'm using an extension but if we plug that in, and now I look at my port, let me click off of this, then go back into it. I now see COM3. So that is what COM my serial converter is on. You may be seeing a different number. It, it doesn't matter. Just pick whichever COM your serial converter is on. And then for programmer, AVR, ISP, Mark II. Now we can move on. For a... I've already set this up, so yours is not going to look like mine, but basically it's going to look something like this. And you want to go section by section and make your selections. Um, I know the Piggy OSD is not an option in here, but I've already determined that the Micro Mini OSD or Minimum OSD is the one that you want. So to choose that, you want to delete these two slashes and define will turn green, which means that it's turned on. Then uh, we're not going to change anything here, nothing here. Here you need to select which uh, configurator you are using to, you know, for your flight controller. I'm using Betaflight, and there's actually three different versions of Betaflight. You have Betaflight 3.1 and newer, 3.0, and then you have older than 3.0, somewhere in here, right here. Uh, so you should be using the newest version of firmware on your flight controller at all times So I would assume it's going to be you guys all of you will be using 3.1 and newer And in that case you want to define this very first beta flight if you're using clean flight Then you will leave beta flight turned off and turn clean flight on 
But once again, I'm going to recommend Beta Flight over Clean Flight because Beta Flight is way better than Clean Flight. Moving on, you also want to select, if you are using a multi rotor, then turn on rotor craft. If you are using an airplane, then you would choose fixed wing. I would assume everyone's using a multi rotor because that's what this YouTube channel is about. Uh, if we keep going, a lot of this stuff does automatically turn on, like this stuff. So you should be seeing this already turned on. And you can leave it turned on. Then, the really the only things I changed that was not turned on already was Micro Mini OSD, I turned on Beta Flight, I turned on Rotorcraft, and you also want to turn on your, or select your MSP rate, or data rate, which is right here. Uh, serial speed settings, and if you're putting your receive and transmit wires coming from a UART on your flight controller, then you want to select 115,200. If you want to put your transmit and receive off of a soft serial port on the flight controller, then you want to use 19,200. I'm not going to cover how to put this OSD on a soft serial port. If you want, look in the description below. You'll find my uh, OSD playlist, and there's a video in there where I specifically show you how to put your OSD on a soft serial port instead of a UART. And that's it. That is all I changed. So all this other stuff is already turned on by default. You don't have to touch anything else. It's just those four things. Because we've already determined that um, if you're using this serial converter, it's going to go just like this with the pins on top. I will plug this in. You'll see that I'm getting the two green lights, which means that uh, it's getting power and everything is working. If you don't see the two green lights, then either you forgot to put solder on the back side to select 5 volts, or you plug this in the wrong way and you fried it. Or I guess it could possibly be a bad USB cable or a bad socket on your computer. So really there's like four different things. Um, so like I said, I'm going to put pressure on this to make sure I get a solid connection on all my pins. And then I'm going to click this arrow for upload. We'll see that it's uploading. It's going to say low memory available, and that's perfectly normal. There's nothing wrong with that. It's going to say low memory because these things don't have that much memory. And then it's going to say done up uploading. Once it says done uploading, then I'm just going to take this, slide it off, unplug this, and you're done. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Um, like I said, look in the description below. I'll have a link to the next video where I show you how to set up the uh, MWOSD GUI and then we will wire this into our build. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.